both my radio and Kane's radio had been destroyed. At that point, I had no way to relay my position or my status to anybody on the patrol, let alone back at Bella. Sergeant Box had a radio on as well on his uniform, so I crawled out to him and his radio was actually still functioning. So I took that up and initially I took up the, the hand mic from his, his radio to just talk in it, see if it worked. And as I was bringing it to my head, the round from the enemy went right through the hand mic and just blew it out of my hand. And I remember just, I remember thinking to myself, I was like, really, <laughs> why? You know, I took, took the hand mic off the radio and made sure it still worked. And then I, I got contact with Bella and started relaying our position, telling them what the status was and where we were. And, you know, that continued for, you know, well past the battle being over and, you know, medevac helicopters arrived. I requested, you know, medevac because I had one that was, you know, severely wounded. And then I had two A and A that had also been pretty severely wounded as well. And so I, you know, I just relayed the, you know, my status, hey, I got, this many casualties and their statuses. The people in charge back at Bella, they're the ones that actually, you know, put in the requests and relay the situation back to the commanders at the main base. I was just a specialist with little over a year in the army, so I was I was very low on the in the rank system. But at at the time I was the only able bodied American at our position, so I just kind of took charge.